Hi everybody, it's Webby. If you've been watching the channel recently, you'll notice there's a big uplift in electric cars. Uh, a lot of manufacturers have been giving me electric cars recently because more and more manufacturers are bringing out new models pretty much every month it seems. Um, today's no different, we're having a look at the Genesis GV70 electric, um, which I have to say is probably one of the nicest electric cars I've driven so far. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all the features and specifications of the car. We're gonna discuss charging, obviously take the car for a drive. Um, and then at the end, I'll obviously give you my thoughts and opinions on what I think of the car. Um, so let's get started having a look around the car. Uh, we'll start on the outside, go to the inside, where I can show you some of the features and specs, and then obviously we'll take it for a bit of a drive. So sit down, relax, enjoy the video, and let's get started. So I suppose the first thing you sort of really notice about the GV70 is the exterior styling. Um, if you kind of don't know what this car is, and a lot of people don't because they probably haven't seen one, at a quick glance you think, oh geez, was that a Bentley or something? Um, just because you've got this badge which looks sort of very Bentley-like on the front. You've got this lovely sort of diamond grill um, at the front of the bonnet as well. And it just gives this sort of, sort of appeal of luxury about the car. Um, it's also got this lovely sort of matte grey paintwork which looks really, really nice. Uh, the sort of striking, sort of typical Genesis headlight design as well, which picks it out as being a Genesis. You've got lovely 20-inch wheels, which look fantastic. Um, coming around the side of the car, you've got sort of chrome strips all the way down the bottoms of the doors and all around the window frames as well, uh, and also on the tops of the door handles. So it's got a very definite sort of luxury feel about it. The nice thing I like um, about this particular electric car is the actual door to get to the charging point is hidden. Whereas a lot of them, they're kind of very obvious and they stand out um, like a sore thumb. But it's just here, you kind of have to almost push to find it. It's just at the very front of the car. Um, so it's really sort of well integrated into the front grille. Um, so it doesn't stand out as being an electric car. Um, so that's a cool little bit of design. Other bits you've got at the front, you've obviously got things like sensors for the radar cruise control, uh, your front camera, your front sensors. Um, so it's all very sort of standard stuff. Um, but like I say, the outside design, I think is a really, really good looking vehicle. Um, and it just stands out from everything else on the road because they all look very similar. Uh, but this is a very sort of striking design. Uh, some people might like it, some might think it's a bit too fussy. I think it's a great looking thing. The side view of the car is also really good looking as well. And I love how this sort of chrome window trim comes along and then sort of dips down at this rear window and then sort of goes along. And where the roof kind of meets that sort of dip down bit, it's got a sort of coupe bit of styling to it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, it is sort of slanty the back window, but just the way this sort of gives this bit of an illusion of being a bit of sort of coupe-like, I think it's quite a clever bit of styling. Um, you can say, I think it's a fantastic looking thing. So let's go and have a look around the back. So Genesis haven't forgotten the styling of the back, it's just as important as the front. So again, you've got the twin sort of light design like we've got at the front of the car. Uh, just a simple Genesis badge in the middle and the GV70 moniker. Uh, the bit of chrome trim follows around the bottom and from around the side of the car. Uh, but it's all sort of quite sleek, it's not too many sort of lumps and bumps. Um, and like a lot of cars, this is like a really good angle. You, you can see all the sort of design cues and the lines along the sort of body of the car and this nice sort of flared sort of rear haunches. Um, so yeah, going from the back, I think they've done a fantastic job of the styling. Now looking at storage capacity in the boot of this GV70, we've got an electric tailgate as you'd probably imagine. I couldn't actually find a button on the tailgate to open it from the outside, you have to use the key, um, which I thought was a little bit bizarre. Um, storage capacity in here is just over 500 litres. If you fold down the back seats, that's almost 1700 litres, so that's actually quite a decent amount of carrying space. Now there's a couple of bits you'll find in the boot of your GV70. So I'll run you through them. You get a little first aid kit, quite handy if um, I don't know you have an accident or just need a band-aid or something like that if you fall over or, or something like that. We've also got a handy little roadside kit. So I don't know if you get a blowout in your car, puncture, you need to change your tire, um, or I don't know, whatever you might need to do. Um, it's actually quite cool. You've got this little mat to kneel on. If you're changing your tire, there's a little towel. There's a little high-vis vest, so you're safe when you're at night if you're changing your tire. 
there's a little rechargeable flashlight that's a cool little feature um actually I remember bmw used to do those i don't know if they still do or not uh, you've got some gloves so your hands don't get dirty uh, whilst you're doing the job there's some hand cleaner so sort of waterless hand cleaner uh, and a little poncho if it's raining so i think that's actually quite a, ni a neat little touch um, because normally you just kind of left your own devices from most of other manufacturers um, so yeah that's a, that's a cool little touch that genesis have put in the car in this little bag here we've got the standard charging cable so if you wanted to charge your car up at home that can just plug into the plug socket in your garage and then you can charge your car up that does take an extremely long time um, we'll get to charging in a minute because uh yeah obviously charging is a big thing with electric cars the other thing you do get and this is something that i've seen on other hyundai models as well obviously hyundai genesis uh, are the same company uh, is this thing called vehicle to load so you basically plug one end uh, into the charging point of the car and then the other end you can actually plug in anything that's like a household plug so if you want to plug in a, you know, if you're going camping for example you wanted to plug in a kettle or microwave oven or kind of whatever you know, is adaptable from uh, a standard sort of home plug you can plug into there and it'll run off the car so that's actually a pretty cool feature too so yeah if you're going camping or whatever you can just plug stuff in and um, yeah it's kind of like being at home but but not so uh, that's a pretty cool feature too um so yeah that's the storage capacity in the boot so that's some of the features on the outside of the car um, and also looking at the storage capacity in the boot uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually have a look inside the car uh, because there's plenty in there to sort of keep you entertained there's lots of nice luxury features in there too um, so i'll explain some of those when we get inside um, if you think of any questions throughout this video feel free to drop them below um, in the comment section and I'll answer them as soon as I can for you um, but yeah let's go and have a look inside this GV70 right so let's have a look inside the car then um, Keely Sentry obviously as you expect this car has got the lighter coloured interior which I think suits it really really well um, and definitely makes you feel a little bit more luxurious and upmarket starting over here on the door panel you've got the lovely sort of cream coloured leather here uh, nice sort of bit of stitching in the leather sort of to contrast that as well which is nice a sort of nice silver touches on the door handles uh, also the speaker grills here uh, and some rings down the bottom of the speaker grill down there uh, nice silver uh, sort of finish into the door switches for the windows and the mirrors uh, and also the memory positions there for the front driver's seat so it's a nice sort of combination of colors which again make it feel very very luxurious now the driver's seat has got a lot of different adjustability so you've got some buttons down here so you've got your traditional backrest sort of backwards and forwards and height adjustment uh, this one here will actually operate the front section here of the seat so when you adjust it forward you'll see that that section there extends out so if you've got long legs you can just get a little bit more support under your thighs there's a couple of other cool buttons here as well this one here is a massage function, which I'll show you how that works uh, in a minute when we switch the car on and look through the uh, infotainment screen. This one here is electric lumbar support, so you can uh, sort of adjust the amount you want to go in and out, but choose up and down whereabouts on your back it is. The little metal one here is to adjust the actual side bolsters on the driver's seat. So when you adjust that, it sort of puts a little bit more grip around your ribcage area. Um, so if you want to sort of be a little bit more sort of held in uh, that's actually quite a cool feature too so there's actually quite a lot of adjustability on the driver's seat um, so let's now step inside and have a look at all the features uh, and tell you what's special about this gv70 so here we are in a driver's seat then and this is the view ahead of you uh, you've got this lovely super soft leather steering wheel uh, which looks very luxurious again uh, I like how you've got the silver trim sort of around the edges which kind of match what we had on the door trims a second ago and the lovely Genesis badge right there in the center. Uh, over on the left hand side, we've got things like the, uh, the sort of the volume for your radio uh, and a couple of other buttons there to operate your phone. Over on the right hand side is the usual sort of buttons there for your adaptive cruise control and um, obviously your distance control for your radar and your lane keeping as well. So that's all sort of pretty simple uh, sort of things to understand and get to know. If we look ahead of us, uh, we've got this nice sort of 3D digital display here in front of the driver. Uh, 
Uh, fairly easy to understand, which is cool. Over on the left, you've obviously got your normal speedo. Uh, the 40, that's kind of your, your traffic sign recognition, so it shows up the speed limit of the road that you're driving on. The center section can show things like your sat-nav, or you can have um, different things uh, displayed on there, depending on what you prefer to show. Over on the right-hand side, uh, not sure how well that's coming out on camera because it's that's a little bit better maybe because the light's just shining in through the window. Um, so that's your power meter. Shows you how much power from the battery that you're using or whether you're actually regenerating power back into the battery. Um, so that's quite cool too. Down the bottom of the display, uh, it then shows us how much charge we've got left in the battery, 127 kilometers. Um, your handbrake, your seat belts, your auto hold function for your handbrake. Uh, your average fuel consumption, not fuel consumption, how much battery you've been using basically. I guess you could use that as fuel consumption if you want to uh, be technical. Uh, and then obviously just the mileage of the vehicle is done. This section here, this is regeneration for the battery. Because on the steering wheel, you've got a couple of paddles. So the one here on the left uh, increases the amount of regenerative braking that applies uh, as you lift your foot off. And then over to the left hand side, there we go, sorry, the right hand side. Uh, that reduces the amount of regenerative braking uh, when you take your foot off the accelerator. Uh, another button that's quite cool on the steering wheel uh, is this boost button. So it gives you a bit more power uh, when you want to overtake, um, you know, and sort of get safely past some sort of traffic in front of you. Um, so that's quite a cool little function to have. Uh, the huge display just there on top of the dashboard um, is a lovely display. It's really crisp and clear and it's got all the functions you need, so your sat nav, your phone, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. The only downside, and there's, there's probably a couple of downsides to this for me, is that it's actually quite far away from your driving position. So I've got my seat um, kind of where I'd have it. But the only thing is, unless you've got really, really long arms, you've got to lean forward to actually touch the screen. So it's kind of a little bit of a design fault. Um, the other downside to this is it's not wireless Apple CarPlay, which in a car that costs $140,000, you've actually got to plug it in via traditional cable. Um, the cables are just down here, so you've got two USBs as you can see, and there's also a little slot down here for wireless charging, which is actually one of the better ones because you put your phone in lengthways and it just sits there quite nicely uh, and charges up. Other than that, the infotainment screen is actually pretty decent. Down here, uh, just below that, we've then got the climate control functions, um, which is a nice digital screen. You've then got little haptic buttons to turn things on and off. Uh, it's obviously dual zone climate control. We've got heated and cooled front seats, which is really, really nice to see as well, um, which you'd expect in a car costing this much money. But it's nice to see also buttons, uh, sort of physical buttons down here as well. So not everything is touchscreen, uh, which is again, something I quite like. Down here in the center console, we've got the usual sort of buttons here. Uh, this dial can operate the infotainment screen as well. And you've got a couple of shortcut buttons there as well. Uh, so it makes things nice and easy. Uh, then a couple of different drive mode buttons there for your different drive modes. Um, so it's normal sort of stuff that we see on most cars these days. Uh, we've got this sort of rather fancy gear selector here. Uh, it's not quite as fancy as the one we had in the GV60 recently, uh, but it still looks pretty plush. It's got a nice, sort of knurled metal finish you can see, sort of just found here. So it does feel quite luxurious. Uh, and the handbrake button is there in the center. Uh, so it's very, very simple to use. Uh, we've then, in terms of storage, got a couple of cup holders just there, which is nice. And then we've got this lovely armrest, which opens up. Uh, and then we've got a bit more storage in there too. So there's plenty of storage options. And in fact, that one's fairly deep as well, which is quite cool, uh, with another 12 volt socket inside. Uh, now I said I was going to show you some of the extra seat functions, uh, so let's just go into uh, the screen here. I've just got to pop it on setup. Um, the things you'll see on here, so this is kind of just the main menu uh, for the infotainment screen. So you can go into here and adjust various different things, um, you know, change your preferences of a lot of the functions about the car. But what you'll always get is this separate sort of section, kind of about a quarter or a third of the screen which will constantly show your battery range uh, in terms of percentage and distance. But this little bit down the bottom will give you constant updates as to where your nearest charging station is, which I think is actually really, really cool. 
it means you haven't got to keep worrying about it. It's there on display all the time. So if you suddenly think, oh, Christ, I need to go to a charging station, the, 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 the screen will just show you where the nearest one is, which I think, think is actually a really handy feature. Now, I mentioned a minute ago when we were looking at the driver's seat, I was going to show you about this massage function. So you press the button on the right-hand side of the driver's seat, and this little screen pops up for what they call ergo motion. And as you just sort of flick through the button, it takes you through the different sort of modes of the, uh, the sort of massage functions. And each time you press it, it just concentrates on a different part of your body. Um, so if you've gone on a long journey and you're feeling a little bit weary and just need something to kind of stimulate you and wake you up, uh, you can actually choose which one of those sort of functions you want, or you can just turn it off. So I actually think it's quite cool, and it, it kind of makes sort of the journey, if you're going on a long trip, uh, a lot more pleasurable. It's nice when you get in the car and, and just shut the door, the seat and the steering will both move back to your previous position. So you haven't got to keep fiddling about or resort to pressing the memory button, it just goes there automatically. Um, so the actual driving position is really, really nice. Um, it's nice having this armrest in the middle because you can kind of just relax as you're driving and you kind of waft along in this car because it's so silent and sort of you feel cushioned from the outside world. Um, the actual sort of view out the front window is really, really nice. Uh, we've also got a head-up display in front of the driver, which is cool. Um, decent side windows. You get a nice lot of light coming in from the panoramic sunroof. And it just feels a really nice, sort of comfortable, luxurious sort of cabin in here. Um, I actually think this is probably the nicest electric car I've been in. Um, it, it just feels, yeah, it feels luxurious. And yes, it's $140,000. So you'd expect it to feel really nice and luxurious, but I've definitely hit the nail on the head with it. Um, I think this sort of lighter cabin, um, in terms of the seat colours, definitely sort of gives that luxurious feel. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's the nicest cabin I've definitely been in. So um, that's my driving position. We'll have a look in the back, see how much space we've got, uh, and check out some of the amenities for rear passengers as well. Stepping into the back of the GV70, uh, the doors do open nice and wide. Uh, the actual window is sort of fairly level, so you don't really need to duck down too much uh, when you get into the back of the car. Legroom isn't fantastic. I mean, I'm okay. Uh, I'm only five foot six, so I can pretty much sit behind anybody. Um, you can just about get your feet under the driver's seat, so you can stretch out a little bit for longer journeys, which is quite nice. Uh, we've got little sort of nets on the back of the seat so you can put stuff in there for storage. Um, the trim from the front doors follows through to the back which is nice. So you've got this sort of nice cream interior with the stitching, uh, all the silver details. You also get this little lift up blind here as well so you can stop the sun coming in. Uh, handy for rear passengers. Uh, down in the centre we've got separate controls for the rear climate control which is nice. Um, and the outer seats are also heated as well. Uh, which the buttons are just down there. Uh, at the very bottom, we've also got a couple of USB charging points. Uh, they're not the fast USB-C, unfortunately. Uh, they're sort of the older USB-A design, as they call them. Um, but it's still nice to have charging the back of the car. And the bits and pieces we've got. Well, obviously, the sunroof does let a little bit of light in. It does feel sort of fairly dark back here because you've got this darker headlining, uh, which, in fact, is really nice. It's kind of this... Uh, sort of fake suede feeling material um, and actually does again makes you feel a little bit more luxurious which is nice. The centre armrest folds down as most cars do we've got a couple of cup holders in there as well um, but even the material on that feels really nice and uh, sort of premium. Um, the outer seats have got the standard ISO fixed child point mountings so there's pretty sort of standard stuff back here but there's just some nice sort of luxury features if you like like the heated seats um, and sort of the side window blinds. The third passenger sat in the middle doesn't have too much of a bump to sit on. You do sit slightly higher up and there's a slight sort of bump in the floor um, to put your feet on. It's not the widest sort of passenger space back here, um, but you could get sort of three people back here if you needed to. Um, but ideally it's probably suited more for two people to carry um, in sort of like nice comfort and uh, a luxurious surroundings. 
Um, but overall, yeah, the cabin is really, really nice on this GV70. So we're now going to take this GV70 for a bit of a drive. Um, and we'll also talk about things like battery charging, driving range as well. Um, so obviously that's really important uh, when you're discussing electric cars. Now normally when you drive electric cars, which I've been very fortunate to drive a fair few recently, you do tend to notice the weight um, of the car, as in obviously how much heavier an electric car is than a petrol or diesel one. And sometimes it can sort of make it sort of feel heavy to drive. But I think Genesis have actually done a really good job with this. Although, yes, you can definitely feel the weight of the car, they hide it pretty well. The, the suspension is tuned really, really well. Because a lot of cars, when you've got the extra weight of the batteries, they upgrade the suspension. And every time you hit a pothole or a speed bump or something, you really sort of notice it because it jars through the car. And although you get a little bit of that because you, you can't help it in this one, Genesis have done a really good job. Um, Hyundai slash Genesis are well known for sort of tuning their cars for Australian roads. Um, so it definitely feels like they've done a really good job with this GV70. Mm. The other thing that I have noticed with this car is with a lot of electric cars and their braking systems, not only can you have the regenerative braking, so when you lift your foot off the accelerator, it puts charge back into the battery. But quite often when you just push the brake pedal, it's really sort of strong and sharp and oversensitive, and it almost kind of pushes you through the, you know, into the windscreen area. But it's nice that the brakes on this are really well regulated, so when you put your foot on the brake, it's like you're driving a petrol car doesn't have that instant bite that you normally get from some electric cars so it's actually nice that it's much more progressive and it makes the journey much more comfortable um, not only for the driver but for passengers as well which is which is really really good acceleration as you'd expect from an electric car is pretty brisk you can definitely feel the weight of the car but there's still nothing that's going to keep up with this when you're leaving the traffic lights except another electric car it's nice you can have that extra boost button as well um, that's on the steering wheel that we looked at earlier. Once you've driven an electric car for a little while, you get kind of over the instant acceleration novelty, I suppose if you call it that, and then you just start to treat it as like a normal everyday car. And that's when it becomes obviously makes a lot more sense because if all you're doing is like accelerating really quickly all the time, that's not really what the car's about. It's obviously to get you from A to B as well. With the two screens in this car, so the one in front of the driver and the infotainment system, they're both really, really simple to use and nice and clear. Not like something in a BMW, for example, which in typical sort of German fashion are overcomplicated and everything is buried inside a menu. Everything is nice and easy in this car. Uh, and I do like that about this Genesis GV70. Now in terms of battery for the GV70, it's got a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which is capable of charging up to 350 kilowatts a minute. So you can actually charge the full battery in as little as 18 minutes, which is really, really impressive. And when you buy your car, it comes with either a five year subscription to Charge Fox free of charge, or they'll actually come and fit a fast charger at your home, again, free of charge, all part of the purchase price of the car, which is really fantastic because some people might be renting so they can't have a charger put into their home because the landlord might not allow it. So then you get the benefit of five years free charge box. The range in the car is up to 445 kilometers. Uh, in the week I've been using it, the range has been about 400. Um, so still a decent amount of charge um, that you can use day to day. Um, so I'm now here at a 50 kilowatt charger. Uh, so it's a public one, it's free to use, uh, like I say, on the charge fox, charge fox network. Um, and you can actually see on the display how quickly it's actually going to charge the battery on your car. So there you go, this is a what they call a CCS Type 2 charger. So you've got both parts of the actual plug plugged into the car. And it's actually given me 49 kilowatts uh, per hour of battery charge. Uh, and in the last five minutes, it's actually put nearly four and a half kilowatts of power back into the battery. Um, so if you're out and about, you can actually charge your battery up really, really quickly. So there you go, that's the charging experience with the GV70. I've just got an invoice from ChargeFox because I don't have uh, the free membership because I don't own this car. Um, it put just uh, just under six kilowatts into the battery for my car. 
uh, and cost me $2.30. Um, so it's one of the cheaper charging stations out there because it only charges at 40 cents per kilowatt. Uh, so yeah, it's actually cheaper than some of the others out there. So it's actually a good experience driving an electric car. Uh, I found charging it really easy. I know people have some problems with you know charging stations not working or charging ports not being available. Um, but that's a bit of luck of the draw, I suppose, with owning an electric car. So that brings us to an end for the review for the car. I'm about to go and drop the keys back to this car, um, to Genesis. Uh, so thanks to them for lending me the car for the week. If there's anything you want to know about this car, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below for me. Uh, and I'll answer them as soon as I can for you. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell because that will tell you every time a new car review comes out. So that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.